Hello friends and welcome back to the channel where today I'm going to be talking you through how I completed all six objectives for the Summer of Suffering Gauntlet completely itemless. So a couple things I want to go over before we jump right into the gameplay. The first thing is that up in the top uh, left corner for you is going to be the path that I'm working on and then in the top right corner here is going to be the objectives that I'm working on for that path so you can reference that as needed. And then uh, down below on the bottom part of the screen is going to be a list of alternate channels champions that you can consider for any given fight. And these alternate champions are based on the objectives that I'm working on. So if you are doing different objectives, uh, some of those champions may not work for those objectives. Uh, and I'm not listing every single alternate available, so don't leave me a comment below that says, why didn't you mention such and such, because I don't have enough space for everybody. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is that although I'm doing all six objectives in this run, you don't have to do that necessarily. If you successfully completed the Deathless Vision objective, uh, you actually have a grace point available, and you can get by with five out of the six objectives and still reach the max milestone in that solo event. So uh, I considered doing that myself here. It just kind of worked out that my teams for these objectives fulfilled all six. Uh, your roster, your skill level uh, may determine that to be not the case. Next thing, uh, speaking of roster and skill level, uh, you may also consider doing a third run uh, if it makes sense for you. So if you spend fewer items overall using like better counters to a path, uh, then you would using like suboptimal counters uh, and doing two runs. I think it may be worth it for you to consider doing a third path. But again, that's roster and skill dependent, whatever works best for you. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, this is a, a pretty lengthy video. I think it, it comes in at like 35, 36 minutes. So I'm not going to talk through the entirety of every fight. A lot of them are, you know, just the same thing over and over again. Uh, so what I am going to do is I'll, I'll talk about my strategy for the fight, why I chose that specific champion, any like gotchas that you need to worry about if you're using that champion. Uh, and then I'll probably just let the gameplay play until the next fight. You can skip around using the time codes in the description below. I'll also probably talk about the alternates that I selected for that fight and how I might play that fight with those as well. I think that's about it. Uh, so without any further delay, let's jump right into the gameplay. All right, let's start off today on the right side path. We have this Toad here first. Really glad they put this fight first uh, because he is probably the most annoying fight of the four that they released originally. Now I know she's not for everybody, but I do think that the best overall option for this fight is Viv Vision. She really feels tailor-made for this fight in many ways. She has easy access to a passive heal block on her second medium. She has easy openings with her phase. She doesn't have to parry or block hits. She has easy access to prowess removal on her heavy attack. And her phase counters count as intercepts, again, for extra prowess removal. And then finally, the special three gives her a fury buff, which when active grants her immunity to reverse control. So once you kind of have Viv set up here, the only annoying part of the fight becomes the rooted special one, which is really not too difficult of a dex. Now I do take a little bit of a different strategy in this version of the fight than I did in the one that I uploaded a couple weeks ago. Uh, focused more in this fight on heavy attacks because when you remove prowess with Viv, you deal an extra burst of damage uh, for the prowess removed. So I'm trying to do that a little bit more often. And then of course when you phase, you power drain, so you do have a few opportunities to heavy spam him in the corner as well. So we use the special three first, again, to get that fury buff, get that reverse controls immunity up. Then we're going special two into special one. And another thing that I was focused on in this fight was making sure that the heal block was up when I was ready for my special one span. That's also very, very important. So he's not regening as you're trying to, uh, you know, whittle his health down with the special ones. All right, so quickly, let's talk through alternates for this fight. I have Warlock written down. Again, Poison Immune uh, has that passive heal block also built into his kit. You do have to intercept a lot with him in order to manage Toad's prowess. Uh, that should be pretty fine. And he's not reverse control immune, so you do have to deal with that. Ironheart has incredible prowess removal on her heavy attack if you can find opportunities for that. Uh, she is not poison immune, uh, so you will have to uh, dash back you know, here and there to remove those poisons off yourself. I did see a lot of people using Hulkbuster. It is possible to, to do this fight with Hulkbuster without Toad using more than like one or two specials. So really, really good, especially if you have like a, a super high ranked uh, Hulkbuster. He can get through this fight quite easily. And then finally, Penny Parker, Poison Immune. Uh, so you have that going for you. So you will have to intercept a lot. Uh, Penny, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be my first option, but she can definitely work uh, for these objectives if you have her here. Uh, I think that's pretty much it here. We're going to special intercept with this uh, special one. And there we go. Zero damage. 
Uh, great Viv fight. Alright, moving on, we have the Destroyer here. I'm going to be using Punk for this fight, just like I did when he came out initially. I really, really like Punk for this fight. If you have him, if you have him duped, he is Rupture Immune, so you don't have to worry about any of the damage back that you get from hitting into Destroyer. Now, you do have to play Punk a little bit differently in this fight, because Destroyer is going to be Stun Immune on his dash attack, so if you just try and like freely intercept, you won't be able to use your passive stun on your counter evade, uh, and you're going to get hit here. So the options that you have for your counter evade are really when you're going to do a well-timed block on one of his light attacks, like I did just there. Now, at the start of the fight, you want to start with your special 3. That's going to increase your rupture damage for the remainder of the fight. Just make it a little bit shorter. And then after that, stick to your special 2s to place those ruptures. The reason I really like Punk for this fight over other options is that Encore passive that he gets from his signature ability. So for each Encore passive, you can see that red uh, and white number 1 icon. Destroyer is going to be more likely to use that special again. So, especially when the power gain triggers at various points in this fight, uh, you are going to be much more likely to be baiting out special ones or even special twos than you are going to be watching him hold his power to three bars and then kill you instantly with a special three. Now, of course, it's not guaranteed, so right there he did end up throwing a special two and he's going to do that again here, uh, but I do feel like it gives you a, a nice safety net uh, just in case. Other thing I want to talk about Punk here is the crowd mechanic. Uh, you gain crowd members by punishing specials and intercepting. They max out at 300, and again, that's going to increase your damage throughout the fight. Uh, hopefully you have learned the special 1 decks by now, because uh, triggering dexterity during destroy a special 1 is going to prevent him from gaining those charges, and is going to delay the power gain that he gets. So let's talk through the alternates that I have listed here. Luke Cage is phenomenal for this fight. His exhaustions uh, reduce ability power rate, so he really locks down that power gain. Uh, and his concussions off the special two turns off you know, a, a bunch of things in this fight. Really, really makes him excellent for this fight. Silk has access to that slow debuff, so she can freely intercept um, Destroyer here. Uh, and then the duration of ruptures, I think, is decreased on her as well. Uh, Hulk can just brute force this fight, no problem. Uh, Photon, you can intercept with her special two. Uh, or do it like after the special two, you can intercept while she's untouchable, uh, and you can kind of get rid of his unstoppable that way. And then Spider-Man 2099, just a phenomenal champion in general. His wither debuffs can handle that power gain, uh, and you might find some success with him as well. Alright, next up we have the first shared fight, and it is Mole Man. So in general here, what you want to use is a champion who has access to either damage over time effects, debuffs or passes, doesn't matter, or power stings because the only way that that mole man is going to take significant damage is any damage that he takes during his special attack animation is going to kind of be like amplified so any damage over time effects that you have on him during his special attacks will be kind of like reflected back to him power sting damage is going to be amplified quite a bit as well now of course mole man has a bunch of purify uh, stuff in his kit so you really want to kind of overpower his ability to purify and keep him in that like berserk phase as much as you can so if you have like the resonate mastery unlocked that can really go a long way toward helping you place more debuffs and keeping him uh, in that phase uh, more frequently so a couple of other alternate options I have here listed. Kate Bishop is really, really good for this fight. Her cold snap is a passive and thus cannot be purified by him. Uh, and she's just really, really good for this fight uh, if you have a Kate Bishop ranked up and are good with her. Black Cat, Black Panther, again, just kind of overpowering him with, with bleed debuffs. Spider-Ham can work. I did do an objective with Spider-Ham when this fight was out originally. I found it really difficult to get uh, him kind of like ramped up. Uh, because you have to you have to make sure that you're placing those porker poppers uh, in his berserk phase. So uh, I went with Chilth for this uh, run. I uh, really like Chilth. It's kind of tough to get her going, but once her bleeds are ramped up, when you have like the maximum spirit charges available, uh, you're going to see her damage during his special attacks really start to increase. I also really like having the grit passive available from her special one. Uh, so in case I need to hit into his block to create space, I can do so safely without him triggering that unstoppable and like clobbering me. It's really easy to get cornered in this fight uh, if you're like trying to maximum out distance his special one. If you don't have your striker available or a special available uh, after the power drain occurs, you can dex once, which I think I do a couple times in, in this fight. 
Uh, you can dex once to purposely trigger spite and then just kind of wait till he gets a bar of power uh, and then bait out and punish a special from there. No need to like bait blind intercepts in this fight if you, if you don't have to. Yeah, so uh, not much else to say for this fight. I'm going to be using Chill for the next fight as well. So it was really important that I kind of play this fight safely and conservatively in order to have as much health uh, as I could left over for the final fight. So at this point in the fight, you can see that our spirit charges have maxed out at 10. That means our bleeds have reached their maximum potency as well. And you can see that we're doing larger chunks of damage here uh, as we have bleeds running on him during his special attacks. Uh, we're also getting damage when we punish his special. That first hit after a special attack counts as during his animation. Uh, so you can see uh, a bunch of big red numbers there whenever we punish one of his specials. So I think that's all I wanted to say about this particular fight. Uh, so I'll let the rest of this run and we'll see what I do. All right, last but not least, we have a brand new fight, Infamous Iron Man. He's pretty easy overall, I would say. Let's talk about the strategies. So in general, you want to avoid champions with buffs, because if you have three or more buffs on you, you're going to be dealing zero damage. So most cosmic champions are going to be totally ineffective for this fight. In addition, anytime you trigger an immunity in this fight, you're going to take a huge burst of damage. So shock immunity or power burn immunity, both big no-nos for this fight. Shock resistance is perfectly fine, uh, but outright immunity is a bad idea. Uh, so the general gameplay loop here is you want to bait out whatever special you want from him, uh, and then once you punish it, you're going to be gaining a grit passive, and then you immediately need to block bait a heavy attack and knock him down with a heavy attack. You have like 10 seconds after his special to knock him down with a heavy, or again, you're going to take a huge burst of damage. Uh, I like Chioth a lot for this fight uh, because her heavy counters naturally uh, refresh and add additional bleeds, and you can see the bleed damage in this fight from her. It just goes absolutely crazy. And if you're sp spamming special one with her, you get access to her own uh, grit passive, which makes it a little bit easier. Now, the big skill ask in this fight is making sure that you understand the dexes and punishes for his special attacks. I think I do mess up one of them, and you can see here, uh, right there, how it kind of uh, causes the fight to go quickly off the rails because then he'll stun you, uh, and then the timer from the heavy counter is going off, and if he doesn't want to throw a heavy, uh, then you're going to take a, a big burst of damage. So make sure that you have a, a lockdown 
on the special one, special two decks and punish. Let's talk about uh, alternates for this fight. Kate Bishop, again, phenomenal for this fight. She has many, many openings uh, for heavy attacks in this fight uh, between the striker, between her, her repost, really, really good. Uh, and then her cold snaps, again, deal a ton of damage. Uh, Punk, also really good for this fight. If you're going to be using Punk, though, you cannot use the, the Spider-Man 2099 Relic because it will make you periodically immune to the, the precision buff from Dexterity, and you're going to die. Luke Cage, also really good for this fight, but really, you can use almost anyone, because it's more about how you play the fight than who you bring. Just avoid the buff-heavy champions, uh, and you should be able to get through this fight without too much difficulty. And that is the right side path, all solos, itemless. Let's move on to the left side. All right, first fight on the left side is an Adam Warlock, our other brand new fight. A little bit more annoying than I Doom. Let's talk through the nodes here. So in this fight, you do want buffs, specifically three or more, or you're going to be dealing no damage. You cannot intercept him with a medium attack, or you're going to be taking a ton of damage. And you also need to save your specials or your heavy for after his specials. You have like four seconds after his special to knock him down. Otherwise, you're going to get a soul barb on you. And if you successfully knock him down, you're going to place the soul barb on him. And that's going to uh, increase your total damage output during the fight as he gains buffs. Power Drain Immunity, really, really helpful in this fight because there is a node where uh, if you have more power than him when, when that purple timer on him goes away, uh, all of your power is drained and he's going to gain all of that power. Uh, so, that you know, limiting access to your special attacks is really going to hurt you in this fight. Uh, so any champion with Power Drain Immunity kind of gets around that. I really like Gladiator for this fight. Uh, not only does he have the power drain immunity, but he has easy access to heavies. So what you can see me doing here is after each of his special attacks, I'm dashing in with a medium and then using my passive stun to get a, an easy heavy attack knockdown. And that's going to keep the soul barb on him for pretty much the whole fight here. Uh, and then as far as my specials are concerned, you can do the special one, the special two, whatever you know kind of suits your fancy. You do want to avoid pushing Adam to his special two in this fight because it's such a long animation that it leaves you very little time at the end to get your knockdown in. And in addition, he triggers the pod after his special two. So if he throws a special two, you're probably taking that soul barb on yourself. And since the fight requires buffs on you, if you trigger a soul barb on yourself, you're probably dying uh, within the next few seconds. Let's quickly talk about alternates for this fight that I have listed. Most of them have that power drain immunity that I was just talking about. Deathless King Groot, really, really good for this fight. Uh, he won't have three buffs necessarily for the entire fight, so you may need to bring along like Odin to help him out there. Hulkling also really good. I'm also using Hulkling later on in the path, so he kind of fits there. I uh, saw some people use Gallon with some success. Venom does not have the power drain immunity against Cosmic Champions, but he does have like buckets of damage, so he can really just overpower uh, Adam in this fight. But again, I really do prefer Gladiator for this fight just because of how easy he gets his openings for heavies with that passive stun. He has easy access to many buffs, way more than the three required. I also like the retaliation damage that he gets uh, from punishing specials, which you'll see uh, that here in a second here. So every time, I think it's with 20 or more confidence, every time you punish a special attack, he deals like a burst of red damage. Uh, and just again, you know, a really nice addition for this fight because you're going to be baiting out and punishing so many special ones in this fight. Uh, and then following up with that retaliation damage and then the heavy attack damage is going to be, uh, you know, skyrocketing as well. Um, yeah, if you don't have Gladiator ranked up, uh, the other option should work fine. It's just going to be more difficult to get openings um, because you don't want Adam to be hitting your block and going unblockable. Uh, so you might have to do some like fancy spacing and uh, heavy counter like his special one, for example, which is not ideal, uh, but you can make it work. And that is Adam Warlock down. All right, moving on, we have the Photon here. I'm going to be using Hulkling for this fight just because he is at full health. Uh, he's, a, he's a pretty decent option for this fight. Now, in general, this fight, similar to I Doom, is more about how you play it than who you use. So my strategy in this fight with Hulkling is to stick to only the special two, 
and every time I use a special attack, my goal is then to hit into or block with a medium and then one light attack, and that's going to trigger a petrify on yourself. Because at any point in this fight, if you reach three bars of power, you're going to take a huge burst of damage. If you reach zero bars of power, you're also going to take a huge burst of damage. So one of the skill asks in this fight is kind of properly managing that power level. And then if you use too many specials uh, in quick succession, you're also going to take a burst of damage. Uh, but that one, I think, is a percentage of your remaining health. So you, you can do it, but it makes the fight more dangerous. Uh, the power level damage, I think, is, is close to instant death, if not instant death. So uh, the other skill ask in this fight is really managing uh, Photon's pure light form. Uh, and if you aren't familiar or, or decent with, with how to counter her special one in pure light form, I would highly recommend uh, checking out my Photon guide, which I have on the channel. Uh, I talk through how to properly bait out and punish her special one when she's in pure light form. That, that's probably the biggest skill ask in this fight. You can also play this fight very effectively without ever even pushing her to pure light form with a bar of power, uh, but I wasn't too concerned about that again because I feel pretty comfortable about how to properly bait out and punish it. Um, the other thing with Hulkling specifically in this fight is that I, I'm not letting myself become too focused on making sure that I get the double fury uh, with my special two. If it kind of works out that way, great. If not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm playing it much more cautiously. Staying alive is more important than trying to nuke her down here. So there are opportunities where you can hit into her block enough with medium attacks, launch your special two into her block like I did there, and then you will get access to, to the second fury. But again, if it doesn't work out, don't force it. Uh, you will have enough damage to clear the fight regardless here. So let's talk through the alternates that I have listed here. I do have Gladiator on my team, uh, and he works well for this fight. I think MSD ended up using Gladiator uh, for this Photon. Um, you know, good thing about using Gladiator is he has access to the Vigilance buff on his special 2, so he can counter her Untouchable, which is great. The bad thing about using Gladiator is that it's really difficult to ramp him up because you don't want to be hitting into a block a lot, otherwise you're going to be triggering uh, those Petrifies and then your power is going to be draining. Uh, in addition, every time you, you stun her uh, with your heavy attack, it's going to trigger her Untouchable. Uh, and if you don't have the Vigilance buff active when you do that, uh, your heavy attack is going to miss uh, and then you're going to get punished. I also have Null written down here as a really good option. Uh, Null, you know, a lot of his damage during Corruption is from Bleed and Photon is Bleed Immune, so you are missing out on that. However, I do think with easy access to the Special 2 and those Armor Breaks, he is still going to be hitting very hard. And I also like the Combat Power Rate Reduction that he has when the opponent is corrupted. So in theory, you're going to be baiting out fewer specials from Photon uh, since you'll be granting her less power uh, with your attacks. Uh, Odin and Venompool I also have listed here. Uh, they fit my objectives. You know, not exactly World Breaker champs for this, but again, this fight is more about how you play the fight than who you use. Uh, and to that end, Odin is super tanky. He's got that really nice bulwark. He's got an armor up buff. Uh, really good damage as well, especially if you're going to be throwing those special twos, which I believe does a percentage of the opponent's health in damage. Venom Pool, a lot of his damage is bleeds, but when he ramps up those furies, again, really, really good damage, even without the bleeds. Uh, and then in very small text there I have, you know, the champion who shall not be named. Uh, I don't think I need to talk too much about what he's capable of. Uh, easy access to a miss counter off his special one. Uh, and then when you're throwing multiple special twos uh, with those cruelty buffs, they are going to hit really, really hard. And of course he has the immortality to help you out there too. So again, just a really good option and he fits the objectives for this path. Uh, so I felt... I felt required to include him even though uh, I did not want to use him or, or play him up uh, too much. So we're about to uh, finish this fight off with Hulkling and uh, we'll see you at the next fight.
All right, we're back at Mole Man here, and I'm going to be using Onslaught for this fight. Uh, Onslaught, a really, really good option for Mole Man for several reasons. Uh, so he has easy access to a lot of damage over time effects from those Neuroshocks, and they are passive effects, which means that M Mole Man cannot purify them. So as the fight goes on, as long as you keep everything paused as often as possible with Onslaught's heavy attack, uh, you're going to be having a ton of good damage uh, amplified during his special attacks. And then if you can work your way up to a special 2 and convert enough of those Neuroshocks to degen, keep the degens paused with your heavy attack, your damage is just going to skyrocket from there. In addition, one strategy that you can employ with Onslaught here is actually taking a special one to the face, uh, because if you do that, it's going to apply a shock debuff on you, and the shock uh, is going to uh, cause Neuroshocks to be placed onto Mole Man, and you'll be immune to, or rather fully resistant to the shock damage, uh, so you know, you'll eventually just be healing it up anyways. A couple things in this fight. Um, with Onslaught, you really want to heavy counter his special one as much as possible. Again, keep those pauses up, manage your power levels though, uh, and then utilize the trick that I talked about earlier in the video where if you don't have an opening, uh, just be patient, trigger dexterity, wait for Spite to give him a special one, and then you can kind of, kind of go from there. Uh, so you can see the we have 30 Neuros up. I'm trying to do my best to uh, work my way up to a special two. I, I'm not sure in this specific run uh, if we are able to get up to a special two there, but the Neuros do do enough damage on their own. Uh, right there, I did lose them, so uh, you know it, it's kind of a bit finicky. If you, if you are comfortable playing more aggressively than I am with Onslaught, you'll probably have a better time with this fight, or a faster time as well. Talk about the alternates that I have listed here. Uh, Venom, Venom Pool, uh, we talked about those for previous fights, and again, uh, for this fight in particular, you want champions who have access to any kind of damage over time effects. Uh, Venom and Venom Pool both have access to bleeds, um, basic attacks for Venom, and then I think special attacks for Venom Pool. Venom Pool probably a little bit more difficult to get him going in this fight. It will be really, really slow, uh, but doable, I think, regardless. And then Hyperion with him, uh, you can try and heavy counter um, Mole Man's special one with your heavy attack to build up your Furies, but you want to be spamming special ones uh, for those incinerates uh, because that's the only source of damage over time that you're going to have with him. But he can definitely work for this fight too, I think. Uh, not many other mutants, I think, uh, for this objective are going to work very well. Um, you know, Mole Man, I, I think I might have mentioned this before, probably the most limiting. Uh, in terms of who you can use uh, in this quest. so But as you can see, Onslaught, if you have an Onslaught, even like a, a, a rank 5 Ascended 6 star, really, really good for this fight. Uh, and you can get through this without triggering Bubble Shield at all, as you can see me doing. Sinister Relic goes a, a long way towards giving you some extra regen uh, because it applies that bleed debuff to you, and that's some free, uh, free willpower healing. Yeah, I think that's about all I wanted to say about this, and I will check in for you at the last fight in this quest. Alright, last fight on the left side and of the quest for exploration is this I Doom again. We're going to be using Onslaught for this fight. He is a great counter with a few caveats, which we'll talk about. So first things first, Onslaught is fully resistant to shock damage, so if I Doom happens to turtle up and places that shock passive on us, it's going to deal no damage and it's going to end up placing Neuroshocks on him. So really, really good safety net there. Now, uh, the caveats about using Onslaught in this fight, uh, the big thing is that the, the organic magnetism debuffs from his special one have an ability accuracy reduction component to them. And what that ends up doing is it actually turns off the node that gives you the grit passive from punishing I Doom special attacks. And that this burned me on my first run. I had to restart my entire run because I was punishing his specials, not getting the grit, and then uh, he was resisting my knockdowns afterward. 
So there are two different ways around this with Onslaught. You can either never use your special one, which is what I'm doing here, uh, and thus you will never trigger the organic magnetism and don't have to worry about that, or you can only let Idoom throw his special two, uh, which means he won't get the aura of iron uh, from the special two. He only gets it from the special one. So either of those is, is going to work. Um, I preferred the special two route for myself here just because it was more guaranteed. I was in more control of what I was doing. Uh, the degen is still you know decent enough uh, we are still able to keep it paused uh, pretty well i would say overall um, and then you're the only thing you're kind of dependent on if you play onslaught this way is i doom throwing heavy so you can see like he's just doing multiple full combos into my block which is unfortunate uh, you can't really do anything about that so just keep the degens going with that special too um, i think i took some burst damage here uh, while I was talking, I don't remember exactly from what, uh, but Onslaught's super tanky here, uh, and as long as you kind of remember to, to block bait heavies after the uh, special punish, just like we talked about uh, with Chielf, you should be fine here. You do have class disadvantage, so, uh, you know, his, his attacks are going to be hitting uh, way less, you know, way less hard than they normally would. In addition, the chip damage from Idoom is going to be higher. Uh, but but onslaughts he's a, he's a big tanky boy so you shouldn't have any problems there. Uh, alternates for this fight that I have listed here and again with this fight you can kind of use anybody because it's more about how you play. Dragon Man should be perfectly fine here. Uh, no, we talked about against the Photon. I think No would be really good here. Uh, I Doom is immune to armor break, uh, but I think. I think that Null's armor removal will still work here. I'm not really sure. If you've used Null for this fight and the armor removal uh, works, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested in knowing that. Uh, Werewolf could also do well here, I think. Uh, Man-Thing, again, limited by no armor breaks. Um, and I think Idoom is immune to Nullify in this fight, so a lot of, like, Man-Thing's damage output is going to be hampered here. Uh, but, it, you know, so it'll be a slower fight, but I think he would still be able to get through it here. So this fight is almost over, which means this video is almost over. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've, uh, you know, been helped out a little bit by this. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what objectives, what, who you ended up using for each of these paths. Really curious. I, I like seeing uh, different teams uh, for content like this. Really, really cool stuff. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.